were no politics discussed, as you understand. There's okay, so Katie, no Michael, Michael, Katie's going to get you up to speed on, on what we call. So in, in the Twitter world, it's not the likes, but he got a lot of tons of retweets, you just got, tons of them. You got retweets, and then there's also favorites. I was seeing your Twitter feed was absolutely blowing up with people saving your tweets last night as well. Well, the thing was, I was on Facebook, and it goes from Facebook to Twitter for me. But remember, it's all new to me. I don't even know what it means when it says like, comment, share. I have no idea. The first one was, uh, well, Bernie, wear a clean suit. The second was Axelrod Obama's brain being worshipped by Cooper. The third one was schmucks attacking Trump on CNN. How boring. They spent 10 minutes attacking. This is before the debate. Right. Then Big Ears came on. They ran a tape of Big Ears. I wrote, biggest failure in presidential history being featured on tape by CNN. Have they no shame? Here's a man who set the Middle East on fire, has turned right. man against man, women against man, gay against straight. Black against white, white against Hispanic in the United States, and he gets up there and he's talking about global warming. Right. The next one was when Anderson Cooper appeared. I wrote, what? What sick glasses on Andy Blooper? Who picked his eyeglasses? I don't know. But they should be fired. They made him look ridiculous. The man just looked ridiculous. The glasses didn't work, so I named him whatever. Well, yeah. maybe, you know, he comes from, uh, he's, he's a Vanderbilt, so I'm sure this was some kind of high-level fashion item that he decided to display to make himself look appealing to the young chicks out there and the young guys out there. I don't know. It didn't work for me. He's not a bad-looking guy, but, I mean, you know, if you like the Ronan Farrell type, he's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> the, next, the next one was Cheryl Crow. I didn't know she was still living. I'm glad to see she's alive, singing the national anthem. So I looked at her. I said, Cheryl Crow? And I tweeted, I outdrew Cheryl Crow at the Concord Pavilion 10 years ago. Why is she not singing the Communist Internacional? To <laughs> Michael, do you remember, you used to have, for, for people that are just new to talk radio, there was a time, you started the Tea Party rallies before there was a Tea Party. You would have events at places like the Concord Pavilion, and you would pack the house like a rock star. You remember that, don't you? We had 7,000 people at the Concord Pavilion, and I haven't done a live event since 2000, and when I first got Teddy. That's a long time ago. That's over 10 years ago, 11 years ago. He was a little pup. It's interesting you should ask that, because I woke up this morning thinking about those early events, and they all came back to me, the Compassionate Conservative events. And I remember that one of the events we had was at the uh, Oakland Airport Hilton, way back when KSFO was in its infancy, before I was a national host. And we had big silhouettes made of politicians out of cardboard. You know how they make them, blow them up right. and make them out. We took a picture of Hillary Clinton, and we had it a life-size on the stage. Then we had one of Bill Clinton and all the other characters, and that was called uh, Name Them and Shame Them. You know, those were, I mean, those were tremendous events, and that was, you know, you were way ahead of your time regarding those things. Can I just, I'm going back to your Twitter feed. This was the one, as I'm following you last night during the debate, this is the I literally, sp I, I literally almost spilled my drink, and I was enjoying uh, a nice uh, adult be beverage that starts with V and ends with A. Hillary for a no-fly zone on oh, Bill's God, pants? That's the most. You know, those are the kind of tweets that got more attention than the serious it's ones. Uh, let's see. <laughs> she was talking about sharing profits with the, or something, or, you know, the poor. Or class warfare, typical Democrat fare. Right. Warfare, class warfare, sex warfare. That's their right. stock and trade. It used to be said that Democrats kept losing when they were losing because they attacked God, guns. Remember that? Right. Now they're attacking right. God. Did, was God mentioned once last night, family values? Well, it was a Democrat debate. You know, are there cows in Berkeley? No. Uh, the answer is no. The next thing was guns, take them away. They're no good. The only guns are good are those that protect Hillary Clinton and the others with Secret Service guns. And right. by the way, I found a new hero on the stage. You think I'm going to just Democrat bash? I had I knew who Jim Webb was, former Navy Secretary, U.S. Marine. I always respected this man enormously. This guy was like a ramrod, honest being on the stage. Mm -hmm. Next to that amorphous mass of anti-American slime. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, frankly, I think Jim Webb would make a great president. I don't know why he has... Well, I don't know. I know exactly why we haven't heard about him. Because he's a real American. He's the old-style Democrat who was a patriot, but a Democrat. I right. thought they didn't exist anymore. He fought, up something. In Vietnam. he fought in Iraq. His son is in Iraq, comes from a military family. He's in favor of the second. Remember when the issue of guns came up last night, guys? What he said? Yes. People yes. have a right to yes. defend themselves. Many of the people on this stage have Secret Service protection. People have a right Excellent to defend point. themselves. You see yes. how shocked 
the others were on the stage it was yes. amazing. You know, you said something yesterday on your broadcast, and we've repeated it even this morning. It's it's very clear that they're allowing an independent to run for president as a Democrat in that of Bernie Sanders to make Hillary look moderate or centrist, right? I think he's a construct of the Hillary campaign. He is such a um, a comic character, and he's he's a stereotype. He's a stereotype of a 1930s leftist that you'd see on a soapbox in Manhattan, standing on a soapbox railing against capitalism. Classic union organizer. Yeah. yeah. The International Ladies Garment, Work, Garment, Garment Workers Union, ILGWU. He has no following outside of the universities and the disaffected, disenfranchised losers in American society. Everybody right. wants something for nothing, likes Grandpa. But the fact of the matter is he's never going to win. He can't win. Not a serious candidate. He's up there only because he makes her look centrist when we know I she's agree. a left-wing nut. I have to get back to your Twitter feed here, Michael. That is the, my <laughs> This is the one. Again, another one that just floored me. And it got a ton of favorites and a lot of retweets. Going out for Chinese. Can't take the comedy liars another second. Looks like a staged Soviet event. <laughs> Didn't it look like a staged event out of the ex-Soviet Union? It, it was so awful and so stiff. Actually, didn't go for Chinese. I went to the, the Basque restaurant up in San Rafael. I sat there with Teddy, had a couple of beers, ate outdoors. It was lovely. I came back, and there it was. It was still up there. I think they were still yakking about it. And I wrote, back from dinner, are they still attacking working people and pandering to the street vermin? That was my last tweet that I had. I gave it up. I couldn't take any more of it. <laughs> it was something to behold. But again, I have to say on a positive note, not to just say oh, I'm against all Democrats. I kept saying, isn't there a patriot Democrat, patriotic Democrat out there somewhere of the old style? And that was Jim mm -hmm. Webb, former Navy that Secretary, U.S. Marine, oh, once a Marine, always a Marine. The guy was really wonderful. I'm sure he's a liberal, okay? But that doesn't make him a bad man nor not a, uh, a patriot. There are liberals who love America. He's one of them. All right, Savage, thanks for joining us. See you soon, guys. Thank you. Remember, right, government good. zero. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It was fun to watch uh, him, Larry, whatever his name is. I don't know, Bernie, Bernie. You know, if... If Woody Allen was a senator, it would be played by Bernie Sanders. If Larry David played a senator, it would be played by, by this one. He is the type of uncle that would come to a dinner party, and he yells at you. He doesn't talk. He doesn't talk. He yells, and there's spittle coming out of the side of his mouth. And on top of it all, he grabs your, your lapel, and he starts poking you in the chest. <laughs> you know, the, I know, this is a type. They grab your lapel, and they yell at you. Just yell. And the, the spittle's flying. They, they spritz you, number two. They spritz you. You need a handkerchief when you talk to a guy like Bernie. And a yeller, a screamer, a ranter, and holds your lapel and pokes you in the chest and knocks you crazy and the halitosis on top of it all. I guarantee you, you don't want to be in the same room with this guy after a corned beef. That's all I can tell you. Anyway, there's another big hour. On, how about him after a pickle, a garlic pickle? Would you be in the same room, a, a subway car with him? Him and uh, can you imagine riding a subway car and the air conditioning goes out with Bernie Sanders with it without a Kobe sandwich? Forget about it. After a rally, you have to burn his clothing. You need a, bur a biohazard. You need a biohazard facility to get rid of the clothing for Bernie Sanders after a, after a rally. It's the Savage Nation. Another big hour. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. It is, believe it or not, hour number three of The Savage Nation. I don't know how we all survived last night, and I think most people 
who have, have any political uh, interest are basically burned out by now. In other words, they invested their political capital in watching that uh, Soviet era debate last night. And today, I don't think they're as tuned in to this as you can imagine. One of the funniest and most poignant articles on this was written in a national review by Jim Garrity. And he said, the debate less than America now has an openly socialist party. That wasn't that funny. But if you read down, it's quite funny when he gets to uh, Bernie Sanders. But it gets even better when he talks about a guy I really like, Jim Webb. Listen to what he writes. He said, Jim Webb pointed out how affirmative action disadvantages poor whites, the need to respect the rights of gun owners, the seriousness of foreign policy threats that Democrats rarely acknowledge, uh, like cyber threats, hacking in China. Jim Webb was the lone voice of reality, saying, with all due respect to Senator Sanders, I don't think the revolution is going to come, and I don't think the Congress is going to pay for all this. He then gives him a jab, which I thought was unfair, and he says, Webb has a good chance of winning the Democratic nomination in 1948. You almost have to wonder how Webb would be doing in the GOP presidential primary, but at a key moment, Webb flinched, saying he wouldn't have a problem with extending Obamacare benefits to illegal immigrants. But give him style points for his declaration that his biggest enemy was the man who tried to kill him with a grenade, a man who's not, not around anymore. I think that's another low blow. I don't appreciate it. I generally don't like to ridicule heroes. And I think Webb is a hero. And I think he'd make, frankly, a great candidate. I'd love to see him and Donald Trump arguing, frankly. I would love that because both of them are patriots. Both of them know the enemy. And both of them know the enemy within. Period. End of story. Now we're going to go on to the other material I did not get to in the previous hours of this show. I'm also open to questions for Bernie Sanders. I will still try to channel a little Bernie. If I can, I will. If the first one flops, I won't do it anymore. Uh, the phone number is 855-400-7282 is the phone number. And these are people who uh, want to ask Bernie Sanders a question. So before we get to those imitation jobs, let's listen to the first question that Andy Blooper asked uh, the commie in 16. Senator Sanders, a Gallup poll says half the country would not put a socialist in the White House. You call yourself a democratic socialist. How can any kind of socialist win a general election in the United States? Well, we're going to win because first we're going to explain what democratic socialism is. And what democratic socialism is about is saying that it is immoral and wrong that the top mm. one-tenth of one percent in this country own almost 90 percent, almost own almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent that spittle. it is wrong today in a rigged economy that 57 percent of all new income is going to the top one percent you hear you hear the spittle flying can you smell the breath you can feel it you can smell it it's palpable you, you want to run out of the room just listening to the, the audio tape of it you could smell the garlic breath you can feel the hand stabbing you in the chest he's got your lapel the uh, what is that medication they used to take that was popular in the fifties for schizos that they don't use anymore? It was a rather benign one. It's found in the Perrier sparkling water and naturally found. Uh, it used to be an old line uh, uh, medication for manic depression. I, I I can't remember it. It's a metal. It's a, it's a heavy metal found a light metal have found in water. Yeah yeah lithium lithium. He's a lithium type, and one of the giveaways of a lithium taker and I don't think he does. I'm just is a spittle on the right and left side of the mouth when they get excited. When Madeleine Albright was Secretary of Hate conducting her war crimes against the Serbian people, she had a lunatic named Jeremy, Jamie Rubin, who worked for her. This guy had a clear and present uh, case of the, uh, uh, of the white uh, jobs on the side of the mouth. He'd get foamy. Whenever he was talking about bombing Serbia, foam appeared on the side of his mouth. He was married, by the way, to a Christian Amanpour, where did she go, by the way? Is she still in the news business? Or is she working for ISIS somewhere? Where is she? She take the job as PR agent for ISIS? 855-407-282. Now we go to uh, him talking about health care, blah, 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 and Denmark and Sweden and Norway. The stuff that you'd hear at a college. I am a Democrat socialist. If they can provide health care in Denmark, you can provide it in this country. I certainly believe that everyone's entitled to health care, and we should use the model of uh, Denmark. So Cooper, to his credit, obviously listened to my show long enough to answer correctly in clip 18. I was very surprised 
that Cooper's a listener to the Savage Nation. Listen to clip 18. Denmark is a country that has a population of 5.6 million people. The question